It all begins in the midst of time. As he walks by, a man sees small puffs of white on the branches of a shrub. He stops, moves his hand towards one. Mankind discovers the softness of cotton. Today, 40% of all textiles are cotton. Beyond that, it has a varied number of uses, from bandages to the paper used in banknotes. It goes into the making of cosmetics and food products. The seeds, rich in protein, find their way into cooking oil. There is no wasteful byproduct. Everything will be processed for soaps, fertilizers, fungicides, pesticides, and even plastics. Cotton really is white gold. In order to flower, cotton requires a great deal of light and heat. Cotton grows between the latitudes of 37 degrees north and 32 degrees south, over 35 million hectares in more than 90 countries. China, the United States, India and Pakistan account for 70% of the world's production, followed by Brazil, the countries of West Africa, Uzbekistan and Turkey. Humans are not the only ones showing an interest in cotton. Insects love it as well. In order to counter the devastation caused by these predators, research financed largely by multinationals has been put on a war footing. Today, more than a third of all cotton grown is genetically modified, despite the ever-growing protests from environmental organizations. GM seeds are very dependent on a host of chemical fertilizers and pesticides that have disastrous repercussions on the environment. The cultivation of cotton is considered to be one of the highest polluters worldwide. New cultivation techniques along with the introduction of GM cotton has had devastating consequences among India's subsistence farmers their overheads, as well as their debts, have shot up. Unable to pay off their loans, many have been pushed to suicide. An estimated 200,000 farmers have taken that step in the last 10 years. In recent years, all this damage led to a reflection on a cotton more fair, more just to nature, an organic cotton, grown without chemical fertilizers or pesticides or GMOs. The choice of organic cotton is obvious in terms of ecology and sustainable development. Also, organic cotton avoids small producers to get into debt by allowing them to make themselves fertilizers and seeds instead of buying them. To face these human dramas and environmental issues, organizations are now working on the development and promotion of organic cotton. Kapas is one of those communities working in southern India. Kapas is a Sanskrit word which means cotton, and Kapas Organic Cotton Project, which we created to help the weaver of uh, rain-fed farming community of Tamil Nadu. Kapas is an organic cotton project which is started with three partners, uh, Bessela Fund, CCD in Madurai and Upasna in Oroville. Initially project began with CCD. CCD worked with 400 uh, organic cotton farmers, rain-fed farmers, and Upasna came into the picture making this project communication and its future strategy we created kapas as a knowledge brand
cotton project like kapas wishes to reposition the concept of organic in india for the farming community to support them and also bring out a healthy lifestyle the interest from besela fund to be involved in kapas has been uh, to try to see if there's a future for small scale farming in india Still in India, 600 million people are living in small-scale farming, but they are increasingly threatened by the changes uh, in India. Uh, their land holding are falling, and the uh, use of water is not sustainable. So it's becoming increasingly difficult to be a small-scale farmer. One of the possibilities could be uh, organic cotton, which gives a premium price. And we started a small-scale project in Madurai. Uh, converting 400 uh, small-scale farmers into organic uh, cotton growing. Kapas has been built on this because one thing is to grow organic cotton, but there are many, many steps from, from you have the cotton to you have the finished textiles, and a lot of these processes are not actually very sustainable or organic also. So for us it was natural to, to see if we could somehow uh, create a new way from the seed in an organic way to the finished textile and that has been our main aim for Kapas. Another trick for small-scale farmers of cotton in India is uh, stable length. The traditional varieties have given a very short stable around 20-30 millimeters while the industry today prefer a much longer stable which is better for their machinery. So the market for small uh, short stable cotton is is becoming more and more difficult and the prices are lower and lower. It will be very difficult for the handloom to survive. It will be very difficult for khadi to survive. Country of modern India would have khadi and what phase of khadi that would be and what will happen in India of handlooms of India which India had been proud of so far. It's a serious question. Organic cotton cultivation accounts for only 1% of worldwide demand. Even though India is the largest producer of organic cotton, much needs to be done in order to develop further organic cotton within the country and all over the world. Even if organic cotton is safer and non-allergenic for the consumer, it nonetheless remains only within the purview of the few.